Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. Just like that, we're onto the final Land Unique unit in the upcoming Dynasties of India DLC, which is coming out tomorrow, April 28th. For this one, we're going to be looking at the Dravidian's unique unit, the Rumi Swordsman. So far, I've been really liking the new units, which all have had situations they thrive, but always some sort of drawback or way to counter them. This one though, it scares me. I don't want to make bold predictions about balance when the DLC isn't even out yet, but check this out. Here it is against elite Jaguars with equal resources, actually winning despite Jaguars being anti-infantry. Likewise, here it is against elite Samurai, an anti-unique unit, again coming out ahead. And finally, here it is beating elite Teutonic Knights, all of these tests with balanced resources. So how is it holding up so well against what we'd expect to be good against an infantry unique unit? That's what we'll be diving into. Let's start with its stats in Castle Age. At first glance, it looks pretty similar to a Long Swordsman, and even has roughly the same cost before supplies, with similar attack, HP, and armor, at least all in the same ballpark. Just keep in mind that these units are starting around the same baseline. Of course, I'm being a bit misleading here, as this is without their charge added on top. Like Custilier, they have a charged attack, in this case plus 12 in Castle Age, so their first attack deals more than double their regular damage. For reference, the Custilier's charge attack is much larger, but also takes longer to recharge. Another difference is the Custilier is fast enough to escape a fight and prepare for its next attack, whereas the Irumi Swordsman being infantry means it isn't in a position to take advantage of that in the same way. The point is while the mechanics look quite similar, in this case it's less about hit and run and more about a burst of damage that overwhelms weak units. In fact, you can see against something as strong as a knight, all three units actually have roughly the same damage over time. Now, one special ability is great, but what about second special ability? It turns out there's hidden splash damage on their charged attack. The way it works is the unit they're targeting takes full damage as if it's being hit by something with 22 attack, and then all nearby units around them take half of what they would have if they had been the target. In this case, the Teutonic Knight, for example, takes 7 damage after its 9 armor is factored in. Now the splash damage is sort of a one-time thing, and the regular attack doesn't trigger it, but every 25 seconds or so, you'll be seeing that effect again for each Arumi Swordsman. For a couple of illustrative matchups in Castle Age, against a similar number of Long Swords, the Arumi Swordsman win with about half their HP left. If it's slowed down, you can see that after the initial shock, the Arumi are at nearly full health, while most of the Long Swordsmen are down to half HP, right from the start. Even knights with equal resources can't win, though as a stable unit, knights are maybe a little easier to mass in early castle age. The main point though is ranged units like crossbows are going to be the way to handle them, and notice they start with zero pierce armor to encourage that. Another thing the unit has going for it is a very quick creation time at 9 seconds per unit. They're upgraded by infantry techs of course, and their elite upgrade is also fairly cheap as upgrades go and gives 10 HP and plus 2 attack. Maybe even more important though, it increases their charge from plus 12 to plus 15. Altogether, that means the Urumi Swordsman's first hit is as if it had 29 attack, which means most units are going to take somewhere around 25 net damage directly depending on armor, while everything around them takes something in the ballpark of 12. What if I told you though, this isn't even them in their final form? If you're unfamiliar with the civilization, they also have their unique tech Woot Steel, which allows their infantry and cavalry to ignore melee armor. It's a little pricey at 750 food and 600 gold, but just think about the implication of that. That means not only whatever they're targeting is guaranteed to take 29 damage up front, but anything around them when using their charge attack, whether it be a villager or a Teutonic Knight, is also taking 15 damage. Now, for 25 seconds between those charge attacks, it fights like a long swordsman, but even still, they're fighting very weakened units. Just to see how crazy this can become in action against a few benchmarks in a post-imperial situation, against an equal cost of champions with supplies, the champions are obviously steamrolled. This is a unit that can take on elite Jaguar warriors and elite Teutonic knights, so infantry is really not the way to handle them. Even against paladins though, it's a pretty similar result. They just take too much early damage to let their better stats shine, and they're also handled cost-effectively. Lighter cavalry like Hazar do even worse since the initial charge attack nearly wipes them out and large numbers of cheap units just melt in front of this unit. In this case, adding more units actually ended up playing into their hands. Instead, battle elephants with staggered formation are more the right idea since you want something that can fight over a long period of time but also works in fewer numbers to minimize the amount of splash damage. Obviously, these aren't an option for every sieve but illustrates the kind of unit that tends to work better. Conics are another good example of a unit that can deal with them as they're also quite good in prolonged fights. The most obvious answer to them of course though is archers, hand cannoneers, or basically anything ranged. 
though not quite as susceptible to ranged units as the Teutonic Knight for example, as it has a bit of speed, but still, with some micro, that seems to be the way to go. The tooltip also specifically mentions they're good against buildings, and while I found their charge attack actually doesn't affect those, as infantry they have arson and a bit of extra bonus damage. So overall, my thoughts based on what I've seen are that this is probably the best infantry unit in the late game, at least in melee. That said, the Custilier really isn't considered overpowered, and it has a similar charge mechanic, though without the area of effect. Keep in mind there's an expensive tech blocking the Dravidian's armor ignoring potential, so I don't expect them to be as big of an issue in Castleage, and it's more a question of whether or not every Civ has a viable option to counter them in post-Imperial. One thing I'll say is I do trust the devs will be keeping an eye on how things play out, and will make changes if needed. That'll do it for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.